Hello everyone, and welcome to this workshop of Tags in Timely. My name is Martin, I'm part of the success team here at Timely, and I'm very excited to talk to you about all things tags related and the insights you can actually create with them. There's a couple of things we'll be diving into today. Firstly, we'll be talking about what tags actually are in Timely. Then, how to set up tag lists both on a practical and a more conceptual level. How to add tag lists to your projects. And finally, how to report on tags in Timely and create these insights we've been talking about. If you haven't yet, I would highly recommend that you also install the memory app and or the many integrations available in Timely. With those, you'll be able to capture every minute of time spent on your memory timeline and then use tags to easily identify each entry. No details are forgotten, no hours are misrepresented, and from there, you can understand where you can optimize your workflows and processes. From a little pitch done, let's talk about what tags are. Really, there are little labels that you and your team can hang on entries when you're logging your time. The beauty of them is that they are consistent and repeatable, and that is what makes them reportable. They give you context around not only individual entries, but also the bigger picture about the aggregate of where you and your team have been spending your time. And it is this context that gives you more insight into your workflow, into where time is going. If you contrast this with notes, which is the little freeform text box that you can leave um, comments on, on entries when you lock your time, that gives you insight into specific hours, but not the bigger picture because it's so changeable and it could be anything. It's also important to note that there are no rules when you're creating tag lists and tags. You can really make them anything as long as it fits in the really basic structure of them. And that is important because it's good that when you sit down to create tags, you think about the deeper insights you're actually trying to gather. Don't feel like you have to make a tag for everything. Just do it for those things that will help you learn more and see deeper into where your time is going. Let's look at some actual examples of real life tag lists to illustrate this point. So here you see a tag list in a timely workspace. And to get here, simply click on this button in the bottom left here, and then the tag tabs at the top. On this page, you will see all the tag lists available in your workspace. And we're gonna go through a couple of specific examples. The first one, is called commercial production. So this is a tag list that I might add to projects where any sort of film production is part of it, or maybe it's the whole of it. And this one is for specific tasks or jobs to be done for this production. As you can see, filming, storytelling, um, project management, etc. Very job specific. So I can see which task of the bigger project my team spends most time on. Here's another example that does much the same, but in this case, it does it for app development. As you can see, requirement gathering, programming, really specific tasks there. But you can also look at bigger phases of a project or of multiple projects. In this case, any branding project I have, I might put the branding phase tag list on, and then people can tag entries that were ideation or pitching, etc. Now, pitching might entail multiple jobs. It might be creating decks. It might be practicing. It might even be traveling to location and giving the actual pitch. But I'm not interested in those specifics in this case. I just want to know which phase people are spending their time on. So I add this tag list. Another option is for internal activities. A lot of teams add specific clients and projects for internal work. And then you can also create a tag list to delve deeper into that. In this case, you see things like meetings and training. So I can see where people are spending their time when they're not actually doing work for clients. Same thing goes for leave. I can create a tag list for different types of leave. And then when people tag the entries, I can get insights into actually why people are away from the office or not working or on leave. And, you know, change the way I do things, organize things if necessary. The last example I wanted to show you is for project specific tag lists. In this case, imagine that me and my team are creating an app called the Big App. And as part of this, we're doing it for multiple operating systems, iOS, Android, macOS, etc. I could create individual projects for all these operating systems, but I can also create one big project for the development of this app and simply create a tag list with the operating system. So when people are working on different ones, they can tag it accordingly. Now, you will also see that some of these tag lists are grayed out. 
that means that they're archived. And what that means is that they won't be available for anyone to use on any entry anymore. They'll be ghost tags, but they will still exist in your reporting and in your insights. If you ever need to get rid of a tag list, maybe the way your work has changed, maybe a specific project one isn't necessary anymore, I would highly recommend that you not delete it, but that you archive it. If you delete tag lists, all the entries that are tagged with those tags will end up without any context at all. The tags will disappear. It is the free flowing time entries that you can't get any insight into. So if you ever want to get rid of a tag list, archive it, do not delete it. Okay. Now we know what they look like, let's create a new one. To do that, simply click Create New in the top right of your screen here. And the first thing you'll be asked to do is give the whole list a name. So in this case, maybe I'm not so interested in the type of work people are doing, but I want to know whether they get any enjoyment out of it. So I create an enjoyment tag list. I call it Enjoyment, and I click Add Tag List. Now the list exists, doesn't have any tags in it yet, so let's create those. First one. Love it. And you can even give it a little icon or emoji. Let's do some hearts here. I click add tag and now that tag exists. Second one, just like it. Little smile, add tag, and there you go. And finally, let's also make one for hate it and give this one a little expressionless face, add tag. And now I have an enjoyment tag list with three tags sitting under here, and I can start adding that to projects and people can use that to actually tag their time. So let's see how you actually add a tag list to a project. To do that, we go to the projects page, go to projects in the left of your screen here, and here you'll see all the projects available. You can either add tag lists to existing projects, or you can add them to a new one if you want. We'll start by looking at the new one. Click new project in the top right, and here you see all the usual fields, details and name, the people, the hourly rate, a budget if you want it. But what we're really interested in is the tags. So there's three options. You can add no tags at all. And then when you do that and people log the time towards this project, they will not be able to add any tags. They won't see any tags. Um, it's just not an option. The other option is to do all tags. And this adds literally all the tags on your workspace. Sometimes this is the best option. Maybe um, you do a lot of the same work and it has to be tagged in the same way. So you just have the tag list on it that you need for everything. And in that case, you can just do all tags every time, problem solved. But for a lot of workspaces, things might be a bit more complicated and you have certain tag lists that are only good for certain projects and others for others. Um, you could do all of them. It would save you a little bit of work, but it would make logging more complicated. So in most cases, I would say try to be very thoughtful about which tag lists you add to which projects. The easier you make it for your team and your end users to lock their time, the less clicks you make it they need, the more likely you are to do it on time and to do it accurately. And that gives you better data and better insights. So in those cases, we go for select tags. And with this option, you can just choose the tag list you want on this specific project and it doesn't influence anything else. So, Let's do the commercial production one we looked at, and maybe I also want the enjoyment one on this project. You can see there's now two available, and there's a couple of further things I can do here. I can require that at least one tag be added to every entry that people make. And with this checked, no one who logs hours to this project will be able to do so until they've added a tag from either of these lists. It doesn't matter which one, just one from either of them. I can also make specific lists required. So maybe, it is very important for me to know what work they've been doing. So I make the commercial production tag list required, but whether they enjoyed it or not is up to my team themselves to let me know. So I don't make that required. I leave that optional. You can do it the other way around too, of course, whichever works best for you. Once you're happy with this, you click on create project and you're done. Now, adding or changing the tag lists to or on existing projects is also possible. To do that, simply click on the project you want to change, click on Edit Project in the top right here, and scroll down to see the same tag interface again. This one has select tags already selected, so maybe I want to add another one, the new and German one I've created. I simply click on that, there it sits, I click Update Project, and now people will be able to log the time in this way as well. 
Okay, now that we've created tag lists and we've added them to projects, I want to quickly show you what it looks like when people are actually logging their time to these lists, uh, to these projects, I mean, apologies. And then we'll go into the reporting. So I go to um, my hours page, and let's find here, new entry, maybe it doesn't work on Saturday. I might choose a project as usual. And here you see the actual tag lists available on this project. In this case, they're only free, so it makes it nice and easy. I can add a couple if I want to. And now the, pro the tags sit there, and when I hit submit, this entry will be appropriately tagged. You can imagine if I add all the tag lists available on the workspace to this project, it makes it harder to find the right one. I can search, of course, and that works, but it's still more work than if there's a shorter list. That's why it's good to always be very intentional with which tag lists you add to which project. As always, think about the actual insights you want and then act accordingly. Okay, we've seen how entries are actually tagged. So now let's get to the meat of it, how to get insights from all these tagged entries on your reporting page. Firstly, if you want to have insights in only one specific project, you can do that on the project page itself. So again, go to the project page, click on the project you want the insights into, and there's two places here where you can learn more about the tags. On the status page, if you scroll down, this is just a list of all the tags that have been used on this project and how many hours have been tagged with those across the entirety of the existence of this project. So you can see that project management has been most work done on this project, followed by filming. And in the branding phase, it is production that had the most hours tagged. If I want to see who has done, how many hours, when, I can even do the little drop down and I can see every individual entry here. Now, maybe you want to learn more about a specific time frame of this project. And to do that, you go to the report tab up here, and you can see. You can choose whatever time frame you want here, either in days, in months, or in years. You can choose a range, which is one day, month, or year. Whatever works best for you. In this case, I'm going to look at the month for May. And again, I scroll down and I see the same interface here with all the tag lists. You can do the same for people. Maybe I don't want to see um, what kind of work has been done on projects. I want to see what kind of work an individual or my team has been doing specifically. So let's look at myself here, but you can of course click on any one you have available here. And if I go to the report tab again and scroll down, let's find the time frame. There we go. You can see the specific tags I've been using in the month of April. Not very many, but you do get insights about where people have been spending your time, their time this way. That is for specific people and specific projects though. If you want an aggregate or a combination or anything like that, you go to the reporting tab. Simply click on it. And here you can see all the reports available to you. These are ones that have been previously created or that you have pinned, they show up here. But in this case, we're gonna create a whole new one. To do that, you click new template in the top right. Give it a name. Always have to give it a name. Let's call this one tags, tags, tags. And the next thing you see are all these filters. So again, we can look at the time frame. I want to use the month of May, but you can do anything you want. You can look at any specific people or combination of people you want. In this case, I want to look at the marketing and content team. But again, you can choose whoever works for you. Same with projects. And finally, the thing we're here for, the tags. So I can either choose to have all tags like this or like this, but I can also go for specific ones. So if I untag, uncheck these, you can see that the time here changes because it only looks at hours tagged with the tags that are checked like this. Let's uncheck them all for now. And then we'll go into some specific insights. I want to emphasize though that one I've shown you are just some examples of what you can do. It's not everything that's possible and I would highly encourage you once you have your tag list set up how you like them and you have people actually tagging their hours on your team to just go in here and play around a little and see the different things um, that are possible. But as a couple of examples maybe I want to see what phase of work my team spends the most time on across the month of May. So to do that, I can just have all the tags unchecked to make sure that we have all of them. Let me double check that that's the case. No, 
There we go. All tags. And I can add a widget. To add a widget, click on the plus here. In this case, I want to look at the tags one. Let's do a table. And here we see that same table with the tags um, that we saw earlier on the project in the people page. But in this case, it's all the tags that this specific team has used across the month from May on any project. And we were talking about which phase of work. So we'll go scroll down to the branding page list. And we can see that the production phase has been the most used in the month of May. But this is maybe more information than we specifically need if we're only interested in the phase. And you can see that, especially if I add the donut widget. So I hover over tags again and click add donut chart. And you can just see how many tags are listed here. So let's filter it down a little bit. Let's go use only the branding phase tag list. And now the information is much better visualized. You can see that 62.4% of my team's time in the month of May has been used in the production phase and 30% in the ideation phase. So maybe that means that everything is how it should be, or it means that we need more people to get production done quicker. You can draw, of course, any conclusions that work for you, but you have the information and the insight to do so. That's the important thing. As another example, maybe I want to see who spends the most time on project management work specifically. In that case, we undo all the tags and we go look at the tag list we saw earlier, commercial production, project management. I click on that. You can see that in total, the team has spent 33 hours, but I want to know how that is broken up. So I add my people widget and I can just see that Ed has done 19 hours, Vivian eight, and consultant Kate has done six hours on project management work. Maybe that means that we don't need consultant Kate for this specific thing. We can spend some money by having her do other work, for example, and these six hours can easily be split across Ed and Vivian. So again, nice and easy, quick insight into where the time is actually going. The final example I wanna show you is looking at um, clients. And specifically, I wanna know for which client do we do the most production work. So I leave the team, I leave the projects because we want to see all the clients listed in there, but we change the tag again. Instead of project management, we now choose production and we add a new widget. In this case, let's add the client widget. And I can see that we've done 11 hours for, of production work for the big company in the month of May. You can also do that, of course, as a donut chart again, Although it will be a very uninteresting donut because it's just 11 hours. So 11 hours, one client across the entire month. Maybe that means we should put less energy into doing production work at all. Not very profitable at this rate. Or maybe it means we should put more effort into attracting more production work. Again, different insights, but the information is there and the different ways to slice it up is there for you to learn this sort of stuff. Once you've clicked around and you're happy and everything's set up how you like it, you create the actual report by clicking create template in the top right. And as you see, now it exists on this list here. With these existing reports, there's a couple further things you can do. You can share it with people, either as a snapshot or as a live report. This creates a link that is publicly viewable to anyone who has that link inside or outside your organization. It can be very useful if you wanna share specific productivity information with a client, for example or you can export your report into an Excel file, a PDF, or a CSV. Simply click on the extension you want. You choose the different um, information columns you want. Here, I'll show you again. There we go. Choose the different information columns you want and click download to get a report. And you can plop that into any of your favorite data analytics tools to get even deeper insight into where your time is going. So those are a couple of examples of how to report on tags. We've also seen how to create them. We've talked a little bit about how to think about tags. We have seen how to add them to projects and how to actually lock time with them. Overall, if there's one big takeaway I would like to um, give you before we call it a day here, it is to really think about the insights you wanna create with these tags and to not try to be too perfect from the get-go. You don't have to have a tag list for everything you could possibly think of. In fact, what you would want in an ideal world is the least number of tag lists to give you all the information you want. The less people have to click to log the time, the more accurate they'll be. So 
I would say create tag lists as you go. If there's some insight you want and need, create a tag list for it, have people tag their time with it. And then if down the line you want some more insight into something else, you can just create another tag list. You can iterate on it towards perfection. It doesn't have to be great from the get-go. Excellent. Okay. Thank you all very, very much for your time. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been enjoyable for you. If you have any questions about this at any point, please feel free to reach out to us by um, simply emailing support, our support team. You can click on the little question mark in the bottom right here and do in-app support or email us. We also have a help center with um, useful articles. So if you want to look something up, you can do so as well. But yes, if you have any questions or run into any issues, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are here to help. Again, thank you for your time and have a great rest of the day.